What is going on everyone, it's Brent House and today I'm telling you how to make a cookie cutter out of absolutely any image. Alright, now first I have to say this, 3D printing does not produce food safe objects. So if you do this, it's at your own risk. Alright, now before we get into it guys, please give me a like, a subscribe, ring the bell, because every single one of those is helping me grow, making me more motivated to post content for uh, all you guys. So please guys, help me out there. Now the first thing, we're jumping right into it. So I'm going to be making a tractor cookie cutter. Now, what we're going for is an image that looks like this. Um, basically, we're just trying to make a border around whatever we are wanting to be our cookie cutter. Or to, uh, yeah. And please, guys, choose a simple image. I promise you, a complex image might actually not be possible based on your computer specs and this method. So this is a very simple image. Um, now, uh, first... Choose a color that is not black. Choose a different color than black. So I'm going to choose red. Uh, and this might not be the most uh, efficient method, but guys, this is extremely easy. So every single line that we make is going to be on a brand new layer. That's very important. Um, so for my circles around the tire, I'm going to shift click. This way I get a perfect circle. And then I'm going to make another layer with this plus button down here. Shift click to get a perfect circle it's not big enough shift click and drag now we're going to make another layer and now I'm going to be using this uh, line tool and I'm gonna control and use the scroll wheel to zoom in and guys down here in the bottom you're going to see a degree symbol I'm looking for zero degrees to get a perfectly straight line click the next layer button and I'm gonna be doing that again looking for zero degrees or sorry 90 degrees this way I can get a perfectly straight line and I'm gonna do that again right here except this is going all the way across I'm just saving myself a little bit of work I'm looking for negative 180 degrees to get a perfectly straight line here a uh, new layer I'm looking for well, that was too far away here I'm looking for negative 90 degrees and new layer here I am looking for again negative 90 degrees new layer here uh, I'm not looking for anything specific here I'm just looking for something that looks good uh, and that's quite close so I'm going to drag this over a little bit uh, back to the line tool make a new layer here I'm looking for zero degrees, new layer. Here looking for negative 90 degrees. This is very difficult. There we go. New layer. And I'm going to do a circle here. Sorry, so I'm going to shift click. I forgot to shift click. Here's my circle. Now, this is where it gets just a little bit complicated. So there's a tool over here. It's the magic wand. And uh, what you'll, if you don't know what the magic wand does, it takes a selected area and just selects the pixels in that area. That was very terrible explanation. But as I'm on layer 11, the only thing on this layer is this circle. So if I click inside of the circle, it selects the inside of the circle. Now, if I move to a different layer, so for instance, layer 10, and I select layer 10, and I click the delete tool, you can see it deletes the uh, stuff that is inside of the circle. That is because as you select and you move layers, your selection doesn't change, but the layer you're on does. So you can now alter the uh, elements on different layers with a selected area. From a different layer so hopefully that made some sense but uh, so we're gonna go to this big tire which is and you can toggle the uh, the checkbox to figure out what is on each layer so uh, go to the tire and we're gonna select the inside and then we're gonna go to this layer and we're gonna select it and we're gonna hit the delete key then we're gonna go back to the tire and we're gonna go over to layer 10 which you can see is this layer uh, sorry, layer 11, I apologize, and I'm deleting that, and then I'm going to go to layer 3, which is the small tire, use the selection tool, click on the inside, 
I'm going to go back to layer 4, delete that, go back to layer 3, which is, again, this tire, and I'm going to go to layer 6, or, I apologize, not 6, which one is this? Is this 7, 4, which one is this layer? Uh, where is this? This must have walked away on me. 7, no, 8, no, 9, 10, where has this gone? I can't find the layer with this upright. Oh, oh, I put these on the same layer. That's a mistake. Well, oh well. Go to layer five, click the delete key. I think I'll survive. It'll just be a little bit uh, annoying. So I'm gonna grab this uh, eraser tool. I'm gonna make my size just a little bit bigger and then delete that manually, just like that. And then I'm going to take this eraser tool again, and I'm going to delete here. And then I'm going to delete this right here. Uh, oh, and I realized I forgot to put a top on this, so I'll have to do that uh, here in a little bit. Uh, so on layer 8, I'm going to go to layer 8, and I'm going to delete this. And then I'm going to go to layer 9, which is this layer, and I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to delete this. And then layer 10, which is this layer. I'm going to delete this. You can kind of see where I'm going at with all this, guys. Um, so back to this big tire. Now we're going to delete all of this. And then I'm going to go to the small tire. And I'm going to delete all of this. And then I'm going to go to the small circle up here which I believe is 11 yep and I'm gonna delete this and basically we now have a uh, full outline and of course I need to re oh, my size got messed up so of course I need to uh, add a top here and I'm looking for zero degrees so on layer 12 I'm going to I'll make this size just a little bigger once again. And then here we go. And then which layers were these? These were layers uh, 7 and 6. So on 6, I'm deleting this. And on 7, I'm deleting this. And there we go. We have our outline. So we're going to come to the top here. And we're just going to click this merge down layers. This is going to combine everything into one layer, and you can see with the uh, visibility change, everything is all in one. Now, lastly, go ahead and merge onto the background there, and we are going to select everything. I'm going to, on my keyboard, do a control C, and I'm going to make a new file, paste this in here, and then we're going to save as, we're going to save it, as a JPEG and then just tractor whatever you want to save it as now click OK and the, the next program we're going to is Inkscape um, so in Inkscape you're going to go to file import and you're going to import your tractor this is not the one I just saved but import your tractor or whatever you've done uh, click OK and then uh, clicking control and the scroll wheel zooms me in. Uh, as I've selected this, I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to do resize to page. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to path and I'm going to go to trace bitmap. And for some reason, it doesn't want to find the bitmap. That's weird. There we go. Go right back to it and it works again. So we're going to be using brightness cutoff. And so I change that, I click the update button, and you can see it finds all of the edges. Uh, I'm going to make this just a little bit darker. Uh, click update, and it gets a little bit better. Move it some more, click the update, and it gets a little bit better. Now I'm going to click OK, and close this. And you can see, if I select this and drag it away, the original image is right here. I know that's the original image because it has the red. So I'm going to uh, click uh, the delete key on my keyboard. Now move this back to the center of our page. 
And if you guys select this over here, this node path, you're going to see there's a bunch of paths, a bunch of lines that were created. Um, so from here, you can do one of two things. If you have a powerful computer, as I mentioned before, you can save this file as is. Uh, if you don't have a powerful computer, you can go to Path, and you can go to Simplify, and you can see what happens. It makes the image a little bit worse. So if I go Control-Z, and then Redo, and Undo, and you can see this is not as detailed as this, most definitely. I'm saving this one personally, so you're going to File, Save As, and save it as an SVG file. So save this however you want, and then the next uh, thing that we're doing is we're going to FreeCAD. We're going to start a new project. We're going to go to the Draft Workbench, and we're going to go to File, Import. Import your SVG file. So this one is the one I'm importing. Do uh, SVG as geometry. Uh, that's very important. And from here, we're doing... Uh, we have to find our outlines. So uh, if you select all of these and hit the space bar, it will turn the other ones off. So uh, select, uh, I found my biggest outline, and I'm going to click this button up here, which is the convert bidirectionally between draft objects and sketches. And then I'm going to select all of these, and I'm going to hit space to turn them off, turn the visibility off. So you can see this sketch that created is an outline of the shape that I just created. So uh, I'm going to select this sketch now and I'm going to actually hit the space bar and turn it off. Select all of these, hit the space bar to turn them back on. This is only so we can visualize what we're doing guys. Turning the visibility on and off doesn't affect anything, it's just so we can visualize it. So the next thing, uh, the next path I'm selecting is this one uh, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to convert bidirectionally between sketches. Uh, and once again, if you guys need to hit the space bar to turn the visibility off on everything else, by all means, go and do that. So I'm going to turn all of these off. I'm going to turn our other sketch back on. And you can see we now have a, a pretty clear outline uh, of what this is. So uh, the next thing, we're going to turn both of these sketches off and turn these ones back on. Just don't want to block our visibility once again. And we need to find the outline, the main outline uh, of the shape we're trying to uh, create. So in this case, I found one, and I'm going to convert it. And then, uh, oh, I apologize. See, I found the wrong one. So I need to, com uh, I need to delete this sketch that I just made. Uh, so this one, we're going to convert this, and then I think I want that uh, so we're going to uh, we're going to convert this and then I want this so we are uh, let's see gosh this is quite tricky um, actually this is probably better see this is why you need to uh, turn the visibility off so I'm going to convert this one see what happens when I turn all of these off Okay, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So, uh, let's see. I'm, I'm confusing myself here. Turn the sketch off. So right now, I turn all my sketches on. We have everything but this uh, wheel over here. So I'm turning these off and I'm turning these back on. I need to get that wheel. So it's this one. Convert the sketch. I can turn all of these off and turn all of these on. And it's pretty clear uh, that I have the outline I want. Now I know there's a window that goes right here, but I do not want that window. So I will not convert that part. So the next thing is we're gonna go to the Sketcher workbench and we're gonna select these two images. These are our biggest, out, or our most outlined images and we're going to go to Sketch, Merge Sketches, and then they merged into this one. So sketch uh, zero, uh, just sketch and sketch one. I'm going to click the space bar and make them not visible. Sketch two and three, select those. I'm going to do sketch merge sketch. And then I'm going to take them and I'm going to make them invisible. Now you can see sketch four 
is our biggest outline. Sketch five is everything on the inside. So I'm gonna go over to the part design workbench, create a new sketch up here with the, uh, with the create a new sketch button. And I'm gonna create a face here. And I want my uh, cookie cutter to be a square. So trace the outline of what we have and click close. Now we're going to extrude this sketch. So uh, extrude the sketch with this button right here. I'm going to extrude it uh, in reverse direction. Uh, 10 millimeters is probably too much, but that's fine uh, for what we're working with right now. Then what we're going to do is we're going to select this face and we're going to select the uh, set support of a sketch and we're going to select sketch uh, four, I believe. Let's see, uh, let's see, is this, yeah, so we're gonna select sketch four, so select this face, and then select sketch four, okay. Do the flat face that's suggested, and then take sketch four and drag it over the body, and then we're going to extrude this. Uh, so you can see now we've extruded the outside of our sketch. Uh, I'm going to extrude that uh, 10 millimeters, that's probably sufficient. Um, and then we're going to select this face again. We are going to select the support sketch and then we're going to do 5. Uh, then we're going to drag 5 over here. Now 5, we're going to extrude this. And this one's going to be extruded by 5 millimeters. And you can see now that our when we press this into the cookie dough, we are going to get a tractor outline shape and uh, as the whole thing and the inside of the cookie is going to be indented with the details. Now this, you can select the body over here, you can go to file, export, and then uh, export this uh, as what tractor cutter uh, new dot STL and then one more thing we're gonna open up our Cura and this is not visible for you guys so I now have this in Cura and from here guys it's however you want to do your slicing but uh, this is now your cookie cutter and so you'll have the outline of a tractor and all of your fine details are going to be indented so the more that you extrude the inside of it, uh, the more, uh, I guess, deep and indented the cookie is going to be. So it's, when it bakes, it's going to look a little bit different. Uh, it'll bake more. If you extrude it more, the, cookie is gonna, uh, the dough is going to be a little bit thinner. So it's going to bake more. It's going to get a little more brown. Um, but guys, you can experiment with that. I mean, once you've got the, uh, once you've got the file made, it's a matter of going back into FreeCAD and changing how much uh, you can right click, edit the pad, and instead of doing 10 millimeters, you can do seven on the outside. And then you can come back over here and repad this, and this is five millimeters. So at this point, it's just a matter of playing with the, uh, with the sizes and getting exactly what you want. Uh. Guys, I hope that was helpful. I hope I did a good job explaining it. If you have any questions, post them down below. I am here to answer everything. Um, please subscribe, like I said. Give me a like, a follow. Put some comments below. Ring the bell. I'm posting more stuff every week. Come back and see me in the next one. See you guys.